Hi there, welcome back to my channel. So today's lesson is, it's not really a lesson like my other weeks where I've had a specific title, a specific thing that I wanted to talk about. It's more of a raw walkthrough to my drawing process. And you'll get to see me draw a creature right here in the blank space with this evil face looking at you. I realized that this looks just like Snoke, <laughs> those of you that watch Star Wars. I didn't intend for it to look like Snoke. It just does. So uh, there's that, and the face will always be looking at you as I'm drawing. Or looking at me, so making sure that I do a good job for you. So I'm gonna walk you through my design process and how I come up with creatures here, and I'm just gonna talk to you as I do it. Um, there, a lot of times when artists need something specific to learn. They're scouring the internet, typing in titles and specific phrases and things because they're looking for a, a very, very niche skill that they have to pick up. And when it comes to sketchbooks, this process right here that I'm doing is literally gonna teach you so much more because uh, it, not only with trial and error, but you have to learn all of the mechanical movements yourself. And everybody's is different. So for example, the pencil pressure that I'm applying to this right now is different than billions of other humans on this planet that are going to try to draw a weird alien thing. I don't even know if it's gonna be alien, but I'm kind of just letting the shapes fall where they may. There's nothing specific about this drawing that I'm hoping to achieve, except realism. So I, I want it to look real, I want it to look believable, because at the end of the day, we want all of our creations to look real, and that's the, the key to it. So the way I like doing this is, oh, and if you're wondering, Right this second, there's no reference. Uh, I'm just sitting at my desk. I do have my monitor up here on my right, but it's it's my Discord channel. So I'm just kind of chilling and watching that and um, just seeing what kind of shapes are falling together nicely. Now I have to really think about each shape that comes. Not Not so much so that it's a headache, but I have to make sure that they look believable, as in... There's bone, there's exoskeleton, there's structure with it. I'm just gonna start off everything very lightly and then we're gonna work dark. Now, if, if I'm drawing lightly like this and then I'm looking at this picture at different angles, tilting my head, making sure the perspective is right, and I like what I see, and I know that I'm not gonna want to change it later, then I will apply a very nice, thin, light coating of shading on top of it. Okay, so I'm kind of liking where this area is going now, but I'm still going to add to it just to see what's gonna happen because in, in my mind, these little cutouts, I guess, right here can have two things, large teeth or tentacles coming out. You know me, I'm probably gonna go the Lovecraftian route and put tentacles in there. Now, there's there's nothing wrong with having a big gaping circular or oval uh, mouth with teeth. I mean, we've all seen that in slug creatures in movies and games. They're so much fun to draw. But I just want to go the creepier route. I don't want to go the predictable route. And the other thing is, when I say predictable, I mean, like, there's certain things that we, as creature designers, put on our creatures. Like the shoulder joint coming out. Well, what's at the end of a shoulder? An elbow. We're all used to seeing elbows, either on lizards, on any quadruped, basically, on humans. So I'm gonna to try to make the joints as different as possible. So I know that this bulbous shape is going to be its head. I know that for a fact now. And I like it. Okay, so I'm just applying a very thin coating up, going this direction. And my technique is that I'll turn the page like this and then I'll apply a second layer 
at a different direction. So I want to do a minimum of three and a maximum of whatever I want to end up with. The more the better. Now, I do have to be careful though, because the palm of my right hand is sitting on top of this sketch. So it's a character that I drew. It's like a bird creature with a very short neck and head, but super exaggerated and elongated legs. All right, and this was this was pencil, and I just outlined it differently. Usually, I would do this technique with my pen, with it's just being line work. But I thought, you know what? I'm just going to keep my pencil really sharp and do it. So, like my hand, I'm shading it, and my pinky is is sliding on top of that sketch. So I have to be very careful. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn this down just a little. We got the evil demon watching over me to make sure I I don't mess up. I do have my eraser in case I do need it. Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm happy with that angle. Maybe not. So I'm going to go one more angle here. Which is slightly off. There we go. Now it's starting to fill in the gaps. Okay, so I th I'm looking at my my camera and I think through the lens I'm going to see virtually the same thing that you guys are when I post this on YouTube. So I want to make sure that you actually see all the detail in there and the, the texture. There we go. Here, this will be slightly, slightly askew. Right like this. We haven't even established a light source yet. It's, it's not anything special or spectacular. Okay. So now what do we have? We have a, a very strange rounded insect shape with what appears to be an arm coming out. Now here's here's an opportunity. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the abdomen down. So very lightly extend the abdomen down past this crazy looking <laughs> limb I guess you could call it. And then right underneath this so it's almost going to be like double shouldered I'm going to put another opening in the exoskeleton down here for another limb and I'm going to try to mimic the shape of this. But this creature is going to stand a little differently than a bug would. Okay, because this thing is very upright. It's uh it's hard to tell like where the weight is shifting because I haven't really drawn anything other than this one shoulder joint and then another limb coming out. So here's here's what I'm going to do just for a peace of mind. Uh, this is going to be the top shoulder portion slash bicep and I'm just going to end it right there and I'm going to have it attached with some cartilage. Think, think of the xenomorph, you know like the the queen and aliens. You, you can't really tell that it's insect but it has a nest it kind of looks Lovecraftian like there's a lot of crazy stuff going on with it okay so I think what I'm gonna do to help the weight I'm just going to extend the arms arm outward and then I'll worry about that later it this is not going to be a huge creature probably human height okay so I'm I'm getting I'm picturing in my head what would have to happen if it was in a first person shooter and you had to go hunt these things down or it was in some kind of tight corridor and you had to shoot your way past it. You know, an annoying NPC or an annoying creature that you just have to get rid of but is definitely not the most difficult to get rid of. Alright, so there are some areas within this body that I know I'm going to be happy with so I don't have to worry about applying darker shading. And that's the fun part. Okay, like for example, see what I'm doing in here? That part right here is the shoulder joint. Okay, so I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm just going to shade slightly darker within that gap because I'm, I'm happy with it. It doesn't have to change. I'm just applying it in that little nook, I guess you can call it, that little crevice so that the top of its body and the bottom of its body looks like it was clamped together. You know, think of a crab, think of a turtle even. Uh, fun stuff, huh? 
Okay, and I'll make this dark because there's not a lot of light source coming in there, but I am going to hint at some cartilage attached to the end of that arm, and it's traveling inside attached to other anatomy in there. See, that's that's the thing that I constantly have to think about when I'm designing these creatures is, what is this going to look like when th with everything off, with all the shells off? Uh, now that I'm looking at this, I might change these into teeth. That's probably going to be a cool idea. I don't know, let's see what it looks like. How about the, this top one up here, I'm just gonna do a crooked one and then this tooth. Ooh, man. Yeah. Okay. I think that was a good choice. But now I have to live up to that, that decision. I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but let's see what happens. So as I as I put these teeth in, there could probably be other layers in here, so I'm just gonna hint at some other teeth. And there's gonna be more value that I add to that. But one area that I do need to figure out is what the heck is happening on the silhouette, like the outer portion here. So I'm gonna do my center line, very light, no matter what you're drawing, if you're drawing along with me, if you're trying to draw the same creature or you're trying to do a creature of your own, draw that center line in there so you know what's happening with the surface. Okay, and then when it comes to like the outer portions of the shells and the silhouette, just make sure that yes, it's unique, but also it it helps with the function of it. Okay, so I'm, I'm immediately thinking that these appendages coming up out of the head are actually needed for the creature. Maybe they're antenna. Okay, maybe they spread outwards horizontally. Maybe they open up like this during mating season, or maybe that is an extrasensory organ that sits on top of the head when it needs to see things. If you hear my voice changing, it's just because I'm I'm changing the position that I'm leaning, making sure that everything is okay, and it's not okay. <laughs> it's not, that's not okay. All right. The reason it wasn't okay is because it looked in perspective over there, but when I listen to my own advice and I sit up straight over the creature, I notice some perspective issues, so I had to fix that before I started putting details on it. All right. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, it's a lot of times when we draw, we tend to lean to the side, and what that does is it immediately messes up the perspective because we are supposed to view our sketchbook from a straight on view so that we can see the entire drawing plane and then we know if it's in perspective or not. Otherwise, you're going to try to draw something vertical and it's actually leaning, which is precisely why in foundation studies I caught a lot of students drawing tilted over cubes. They weren't standing vertical. Same thing happens no matter what you're drawing. Organic, hard surface, anything. If you want something vertical, you've got to view the entire image plane sitting up with good posture. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with what's going on in these teeth. You know, a cool trick that I do whenever I'm shading inside of a mouth is if I have a really dark area that I shaded in already, that I know I'm going to be happy with, and then there's another area next to it that's semi the same, but not really, then I'm just going to take my pencil, darken it on the inside, and go right over that, the original black area that I shaded, because you can't mess it up. It's already darker than that value. All you're doing is having two values meet together. And guess what? If it becomes too like muddied down or it's not popping good enough, then you just go right back in and you just darken it up. Now I don't want to darken it up too much because like I said before, when we attached this limb, I guess you could call it, the shoulder to this ex exoskeleton, we showed that skin is going underneath, there's muscle, tendons, ligaments. Same thing has to happen inside here. These, these aren't human teeth. These are not even creature teeth. We don't know what these are. These are creature teeth, but we don't know if it's a mammal, if it's an insect, if it's a reptilian, like what's going on here? So there could be bone that it's attached to. 
but we have to make it believable. We have to keep that wonder going. And you, you'll always draw your best stuff when you don't try to draw your best stuff. That's the thing. It's like meeting your best friends in life or meeting that, that awesome person you're going to spend the rest of your life with. It's when you don't search or if you just let things happen. Okay, it's, th it's the same thing with drawing. When you worry too much about perfecting techniques, you perfect no techniques. It's like trying to please everybody and you don't get good at anything. And, and I really mean that. My other videos where I told you that if you really want to treat art like a career, you have to become obsessed about it. And that's, that means if you have a headache, if it's raining outside, if you just came back from a rave, if you just went through a breakup, draw. Not only is it therapeutic and it'll probably help you, but every single time you put pencil to paper or pen, whatever you're using, you're that much better than you were 20 minutes ago. It's just repetition. And I know it seems daunting right now, especially if you've never drawn anything before. Like if you, if you like the idea of being an artist, but you've never actually attempted the art, get that paper. Look at the video that I posted. Was it last week, week before when it, when it, when I stated, Hey, if you want to learn how to draw and you've never done it before in your life, I'm going to teach you how to draw some lines. That, that's how it starts. So I don't, I don't think this thing has eyes. I'm not sure. But what I do know is that the light source is probably going to be above here. Kind of like, you know, Snoke up here. <laughs> I keep calling him Snoke, but that's not who it is. Okay. This was drawn by accident. I didn't see any of the Star Wars when I drew this, like the newer ones. So... And then I saw it, and I was like, man, Snoke is massive, and I drew that already. It's so weird. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm putting in a layer of value to show that the exoskeleton on the head is actually bending under, creating a nice little shadow under there. It's not a severe bend, but it's enough to where it looks like it's going to wrap down and attach to the gums or... You know, whatever, whatever that is under there. Ah, I, I love it when I have no idea what I'm drawing. I'm trying to explain this as I go, my technique. And yet I just want to draw, 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 draw. I do have an idea, though. I, I just had this gnarly idea about a membrane being stretched out here. And then all of a sudden, a disgusting... Ooh, man. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. My day is not complete in creature design without drawing some form of horrific-looking mandible with a membrane stretching down to protect it and attach it to its jaw. Now my life is complete. Yeah, that looks okay. I'm not really too worried about the gums. I'm just going to... This is what I do. So I, if I have an area that's shaded inside there... And it's not super important to me. Then I'll just kind of brush over it with uh, a texture layer like this, maybe another direction, and then I'll just hint at some wrinkles, and then it's done. Now, here's the thing where you could add black Prismacolor, but you don't have to. And that is, I know for a fact now that I see the mouth that the inside of this oval-like mouth will be pitch black. But I just don't know where the pitch black is gonna be located. So I, I have my black Prismacolor right here handy, just in case, so I'm gonna keep it up here out of view. Um, I, the reason I'm not adding it yet is because these secondary teeth in here, it's basically like the under part of your mouth, like the palate inside your mouth traveling back towards your tonsils so you know that, that light is scarce back there when you open your mouth. 
and I want to show that there's going to be less light back there. All right, so here's my misting effect. Here's how I do it. So I have an outline for the body. I always like to show that maybe these creatures live in some form of humidity. Not all of them, but atmosphere in general. Yeah, there's there's always there's always something fun to be had when drawing creatures in fog or some kind of hot and humid climate or it's like coming out from yeah, you know what I'm talking about like those really cinematic shots in movies where you see a forest or you see moonlight casting an eerie glow on a specific pine tree or a path and then just fog that came out of nowhere you know fog machines <laughs> And all of a sudden the creature emerges from it. It's kind of like that. You want these things to emerge. And even though we're drawing on a 2D surface, you want to give the illusion that it is living and breathing in front of you. Okay, so you can see what I've done so far. It's just layering. That's all it is. It's layering. It's being patient. And it's also thinking about the underlying structure of your creature. All right, so you might think that that is just a ton of stuff to worry about. And it's really not because all the shapes that I have put together, I let happen with ease. I, I, didn't, um, I didn't overthink it like, oh, this has to be the leg of a cricket. This has to be the shell you know, of a trilobite or something along those lines. Remember, in the beginning, I said there's no reference here. So I'm not trying to th rack my brain or, or Google search images of horseshoe crabs or, or pill bugs or anything like that. I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to apply a shell-like shape, and I know there's going to be an opening there, but the tendons and the shadows and everything around there is what's going to make it believable. Okay, so the next step, I need to figure out the mouth. Okay, so this is usually what I do when I do creature design. Face, mouth whatever it is up here that that has a jaw and what, what would be eyes, I guess, but I need to figure out what that large mandible is. And I think it's, it's just gonna be a very sharp tooth, you could call it. Okay, but remember, this isn't fully insect. It's something that we haven't seen. So I need to make sure that all of the ligaments and the stretched membrane and everything down here is going to be believable so that you can bend these shapes just like a normal jaw. And also, uh, you, you need to repeat certain patterns to make your creatures more believable too, like it was intentional versus accidental. Which is actually something I wanna talk about. So if you all are, regardless of the subject matter that, that makes up the majority of your portfolios, when you put work in your portfolio and you've had it vetted with the community, you've asked art directors, etc., just make sure that your work looks and feels intentional and self-edited. So what I mean by that is, and you've, you've probably seen this too, when people submit work, they, they don't know what they don't know and they just assume that it's good enough or they didn't get it reviewed correctly and they just kind of put it in and hope for the best. It's like spray and pray, you know, like the old Contra games. Uh, the problem with that is art directors immediately see if you don't know what's going on. And if they catch mistakes with your character designs, like does this person know that the perspective is off? Did nobody tell them? Or did they know and they just didn't care and they think that nobody would notice? And it's like, well, these, they definitely noticed. And it's usually too late. Uh, I'm totally guilty of this, okay? I will, I will admit that. I've learned the hard way to not do that. All right, so if like something feels a little off, but you think people won't notice, people will notice. And I don't want to get sidetracked there, but to tie it back into this, I just want to make sure that every single thing looks intentional and is designed. You don't want to leave any place aloof. You don't want to you don't want to leave a place not thought of. 
All right. It happens a lot with hands and feet, uh, certain parts of armor. Because remember, at the end of the day, it's it's not just your 2D work that is important. It's the 3D department being excited about what you did in 2D. Because if you don't do your job correctly in 2D, then when it goes down the pipeline, there's going to be a lot of questions needed to be answered. And, you know, that's inevitable in game design. It's, it's going to happen. Because there's a lot of... Uh, not confusing, but there's a lot of complicated things that need to happen when you design certain characters and creatures. But when a 3D modeler looks at your model and go, I would love to model that, or that looks like something that could be in such and such game, if, if they say that to you, then you're probably on the right track. And it could be a rusty design too. It could be something that still needs to be fleshed out. But at the end of the day, you you have to make the 3D artists' lives as easy as possible. All right? Because we as 2D artists can we can try and dream up of the craziest stuff that anybody has ever seen. All right? But it it has to be functional. Because if it's not functional, then it's just going to be sitting in a concept art vault somewhere and never used again. Or somebody else is going to take it and they're going to butcher the design so badly that they're going to wonder where the heck the original design was. All right, so as I'm figuring out the the body, you see how much time I've been spending on this head? It's because it, for me, and this is something that I teach in Creature Design Workshop, um, when you get that head designed, you can immediately start to think about the personality of the character, or, well, here, you think about the character of the creature that you're designing. There you go. That probably sounds a little better. You know, you want to bring out that character, even if it doesn't have eyes and there's no facial expressions and you can't, you can't tie in human emotions with it. You know, you can't personalize it. it but the same thing happens, even if it's eyeless. Okay, if it's eyeless but it looks ferocious and you can see it snarling and all kinds of mean things. That builds the character. If there's scars on it, um, if age shows the wrinkles, you know all that, all that fun stuff. Now I have no idea what's happening to the back of this body here. It, it, it's not really important because this rounded shape is in the far back. It's almost like if you saw a picture, a drawing of a bee, you know, the big fat abdomen in the back. You won't see as much of that as you would in the front, and like the bees pinchers and pincers and the hands and everything. But I will put some value on there. Now if you notice, like the value in the front is, is the same as the value in the back. Ultimately, I don't want that when I work on depth perception. But this is how I build up my drawings. I just, I play off values. I see, okay, the mouth is now dark. I'm gonna move down to the face. I'm gonna see what the light is doing. I'm still not happy with this, so I'm probably, I'm just gonna tilt this a little bit more, and I'm just gonna add some more value going straight up that shell, like this. And when you start to layer these passes over top of one another, especially if you get like the double digit passes, I mean, we're talking 10 plus, you're gonna see some really nice, smooth effects in here. and. It's not just the smoothness that's nice to look at. It's what you put on top of it. Because right now I'm just doing very, very short, controlled lines. And it's going to start bringing out what appears to be veins. You can probably see them where you guys are viewing them. Because I'm, I'm right here next to my sketchbook, so I see them. I want to make sure that the camera is actually picking this up. I'm actually so happy I got this lighting set up a couple months ago. I, I do want to tell everybody that I'm, I'm working really hard on making sure that my phone does not overheat during my live sessions. So with that said, there will not be a live session this week. Okay. Now, when you view this months from now, there, you would have had to view more live sessions, obviously. 
but it's June 19th now. So there won't, there probably won't be a live session until after July 4th, but I, I could be wrong. It just depends. I love doing the live sessions. I told you it's a staple now with my channel. It's just after viewing last week and how my phone was overheating, I'm not filming this with my phone. This is actually a camera. Okay, it's the Canon EOS Rebel T7. I love this camera. All right. I couldn't have got it without you guys too, so thank you. Okay, so now we got, we got a lot going on here. Here's the other thing. This tooth, I guess you can call it a tooth. I'm gonna shade directly over top of it. Like this. This is how I work. I'm already happy with the values happening around that mouth. They're darker than the lines that I'm currently putting on my page anyway, so I can't ruin it. I know that I want it to be a minimum of this tone. So it's gonna be correct regardless. I just need to make sure it's smooth. Hold on a second, let's see if I turn this upside down. Yep, totally upside down creature now. But this is all inside of the mouth now. Right, like that. Okay, um, I'm not happy with that one. No, I, I, I didn't mean that. I'm not satisfied with only doing three passes on that. So what I'm gonna do, I actually need to put a piece of paper down so I really don't smudge that other drawing. My hand is, is literally go across my sketchbook on another drawing I showed you at the beginning. I like that drawing, I don't wanna mess it up. Okay, so that's four passes, let's do five. That one is slightly different than that. This is me being picky. I'll probably go after, yeah, why not? Let's just go over the whole thing again. Can't hurt it. Making sure that you keep all the pencil strokes close together. Okay. Now we're getting some goodness. Okay, so I, I'm gonna have to turn my sketchbook here. It's gonna be a slightly different angle than what you're used to seeing. Um, I'm gonna be leaning over. I think I just shook my camera. So I gotta lean over and then this perspective, man, this is very strange because the, the mandible is bent in such a way to where it comes at us, but when you view it from almost front view, it looks like it's bent, so, oh, it's, it's hard to explain. Some of the teeth is behind other teeth. <laughs> oh boy, what did I get myself into on this one? You can see me working through my perspective here as I'm walking my pencil over. Okay, so I know that the, yeah, there's gonna be no trochanter on there. It's just me just blurting out bug parts and stuff. Okay. This isn't open very wide, so it's not gonna be completely horizontal. All right, now remember what I said about adding the black Prismacolor. Do I still have that over there? Oh yeah, it's over here. Okay, so the black Prismacolor. It's gonna be on the inside of this mouth, but I still don't have the exact location that I need it. But it's still, it's still gonna be handy for me, so I'm gonna keep that here. I have to finish this mouth, or else I'm not gonna be satisfied, and I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a nervous wreck because I'm gonna close my sketchbook, I'm gonna stop recording, and I'm gonna wish that I finished this mouth. And I don't wanna have to do with that, deal with that. So I'm going to indicate some anatomy inside here. Okay, nothing too fancy, just a lot of stretched skin, big mandibles, and how they come together in here. And there is going to be a slight opening it's just a small little like half oval of where the where I think the mouth hole would would exist. Okay, because what's going to happen is uh, th this row of teeth right here where my pencil is pointing. In perspective, it's sitting behind this one, so I could put an indication of where those would be. But like I said, that that whole thing is just crazy. I had to trust the sketch though. 
But what's happening in here is that the gum tissue of the creature is collapsing in on itself and it's going down that throat. Okay, now I have to be very careful. This is what this is what I have to deal with when I do this to myself. <laughs> and these creature mouths that I draw, especially with a lot of teeth and crazy perspective. So like if it's black inside there, I have to fade that blackness out. So now I know where it's going to be. Here's how I handle it. Notice how sharp it is. Okay, you have to keep these black prism colors sharp. More so than graphite because it's wax and it'll not stay sharp very long. Okay. Now, I'm I'm not going in straight lines back and forth. Instead, I'm taking my black prism color and I'm doing very very tiny circles. Not straight lines, but circles, and I'm making sure that the teeth that I drew when I first started this are staying white or cream colored, you know, cuz that's the color of the paper. They're staying their tone. That's why it's important to sharpen this wax so it doesn't flatten out and ruin it. So now I'm doing little circles and I'm fading the circles out into the space of the open gums. I'm going to darken the, some of the tips of the teeth here so that it gives them a better outline so you can see them in you know like atmospheric perspective and how they come towards us. All right, so there's some really cool opportunity up here to separate the gum tissue from, you know, like the lips and as it comes in. All right, so I'm going to tell you why there, this is important. So you can see that all those tiny, tiny little ovals that I shaded in there, and as I released my hand pressure and moved out throughout the mouth, it creates a nice gradient. So then this is when you take your graphite, whatever you're using, and you're going to do the same movements so that you can follow the pattern of the black prism color and you're going to very lightly shade on top of that black prism color. So the cool thing that happens when you mix black prism color with graphite is that each one produces its own unique texture on top of whatever paper you're using. If it's smoother, if it's like a very smooth paper hammer mill, printer paper even. Um, it creates nice grooves. And then when you go back over with graphite, all of the grooves that were opened up due to the wax being thicker are filled in with the graphite. So you have this really nice nice juxtaposition of both of them. It's, it's really cool. So see, even if I did that little bit, I have to go back and sharpen my Prismacolor again. Okay, so now it's sharp again. Th this is just when patience comes in. You have to have patience in this because if you screw this mouth up, if I screw this mouth up, then I'm never gonna forgive myself. I have done that before. I have put hours into a drawing and completely screwed up the mouth and the whole drawing is ruined. Stuff that I haven't, I've never posted online that I thought was probably some of my best work and I haven't because I was just overzealous and I, you know, I didn't, I didn't give myself time to think about what was happening. The other thing is any of the areas of the body that I know the least amount of light is touching, I use a black prism color. So see where the exoskeleton stops and the gum tissue starts. Inside here, there will ultimately be some crevices where the light is just not touching. But you don't want to outline it because then it'll be cartoony. Okay, and there's nothing against cartoons. It's just I want I want realism for this. So I'm just going to go in here, maybe like the top of the gum. I'm not touching the side of the face because I'll show you why. This is where you can use atmospheric perspective to your advantage. You're just going to go over the entire mandible. I keep saying your like you're drawing the same thing I am. I am going over my entire mandible on this side. Okay, and I'm just going to hint at some teeth, but ultimately this big mandible on the right is going to get some nice shaded treatment, like so. You see how I kind of went out of bounds here? Doesn't matter. 
I'm trying to give the illusion that there is a physical mist slash fog on my paper and it's living in an atmosphere. That's what I want. Now that I have that, this is when I really have to start studying the different values that I have all coupled together. Look how close all the values are in here and I've gone pretty much the whole spectrum. I've barely had any value on this tooth, you could call it, all the way to jet black in just a fixed area like this. This is, this is how you're gonna build up value. This is what I do to all my creatures. No matter what kind of mouth they have, all the details are always in the face. Now, the reason I was saying that is because this right here is the right bottom mandible. That is gonna actually be darker. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I making that specific tooth darker? And it's because if I darken that tip, real menacing dark tip right there, and then outline this one, but have some maybe a shine on it, this is gonna create depth. We know just by looking at this drawing that this tooth, this horrifically sharp fang is closest to us and that this mandible that it's attached to with the stretched membrane and everything behind it and you know like the gum tissue and everything, that's secondary, that's inside. You don't need a lot of detail for those inside details. Okay, and I'm going to do some more uh, circular shading movements right in between those teeth. So now what's happening, you see a lot of depth happening. Um, I'm, I'm pleased with it. I could keep going with that mouth, and I think I will. Because so, yeah, there's, there's areas like, for example, the inside of this is behind those teeth. There's the teeth. There are the teeth. So I'm going to do tiny little controlled movements in between each tooth and I'm just going to make sure my shading is controlled. I'm not going to go wild with it. I'm not going to be overzealous with it. All right. And the other thing that you have to think about is when you, because I, I deliberately light most of my creatures from above because it's, uh, it's the easiest to do. I don't need any, I don't want to show anything super fancy unless I'm doing a portfolio piece where, you know, like a character is shining a light on it or the sun is in the ev like evening setting. But other than that, I wanna keep it simple. I wanna show some structure over here on the face too, on the right side of the face. So you can see like all of these different exoskeleton shapes and the directions and the plating. I'm only indicating over here on the right of its head what is going on. You don't need to go in super amounts of detail on that part. There we go. Okay, so once we have that, like, also for, for here, you can put some shading in it, and that strange little head apparatus. Put some values on that, keeping the strokes close together, and then once I put some values on it, this one will actually be darker because it's closer to us, and it, and it gets more detail. I'm going to leave the one in the back where it is. If you're interested in uh, joining July's Creature Design Workshop, I do have signups now going on. So if you check out the links in the description below, I have links to not only our Creature Design Workshop Discord, which everybody is welcome to join and show us your work. Everybody's having fun. It's a bustling community. We have places like art critiques, portfolios. Uh, you can see what other students are are doing both in their own respective schools and also our workshop. So a lot of stuff going on. A lot of people are joining on a daily basis. So head on down there. And if you want to sign up for my creature design workshop for July, which starts July 2nd, it runs all through July. Um, check out the link in the description below and you can look at the syllabus. You can look at student work, read testimonials. It's a lot of fun. I only hold eight people. Okay. And Several have already signed up, so if you want to sign up for it, now's the chance. I can't promise, you know, I might be able to maneuver some spaces, but we'll, we'll have to see. Okay, so there's, there's the face. Um, this is going to be in shadow. Actually, that entire thing is going to be in shadow. Why? 
because the light coming down is going to cast a shadow on it. Same thing with the front of the root system of the teeth. Okay, now that we have worked a lot on this head, so we we have some indication of where the, the limbs are going to be, I'm thinking let's just do an outline for the actual body, or I'm sorry, the legs, and then we can actually see it stand. Okay, now a thing I like to do whenever I put more energy into the head than anywhere else is just hint at what's going on with the rest of the body. Now you can see that when I was, well, when it was in the time-lapse section that I was just giving some brief outlines of some body shapes. Okay, there's a lot that's going into the stance of this creature and the weight distribution. I don't have to do anything fancy over here. My selling point that I wanted was that face. And when we, when we get that face in there, it can sell the personality very, very quickly. So now I'm just kind of giving some rough outlines, holding my pencil loosely. If you're doing it with a pen, if you're drawing something crazy along with me, you know, I'm, I hope that you join our Creature Design Workshop Discord and post your work in the personal work channel. Because there's a lot of stuff being posted in there on a daily basis, just awesome awesome creature work from people from all over the world. It's really great to see. Classroom assignments, sketchbooks that people just bought, literally drawing on napkins in restaurants, like a lot of really cool stuff. And we're having weekly creature design workshop contests. We got the July portion coming up soon. Uh, people are working on the June right now. It's just really cool. Okay, so here, 
if there are some areas on the side of like a body part and you don't really know if there's a line there or whatever just I just like putting in some atmospheric perspective put in some mist just have it flow directly into the paper itself so it looks like it's coming through and it's coming towards us there you go you don't have to have anything fancy to have a believable creature and then I'm just gonna finish this off with some very rough core shadow on the head area I could make it like a spider right maybe put in some small hairs I mean I could cover this whole thing with hair. I don't want to start down that rabbit hole because I would probably be recording for another hour <laughs> I'm not gonna do that okay hopefully you got a lot out of today this was a more raw approach to how I draw if you want me to draw or do more of these sessions, like the raw ones where I just talked to you, just let me know in the comments. Um, if you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. I have you know, two videos coming out every single week and a live session. Um, I, I do This particular week is a little pushed back. Um, I have the video today, obviously, but also my second one is going to be Saturday, and then I'm going to have a live session on Sunday. And if you're seeing this a year from now, a month from now, it has already happened. I'm just telling you. All right. Thanks, all. See you later.